This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening. Have you got a message on your phone this evening that you've never seen before? It was because of this. A snow squall that made its way through South Fargo around 8 this evening. It didn't last long, but if you were caught in it, it made difficult for driving conditions. And as Nathan tells us, it brought about a lot of questions. Yeah, a lot of questions <laughs> because they folks again got the alert on the phone. They've never right. seen a snow, mm -hmm. snow squall before, seen a snow squall warning before. Yes, and it's a new it, uh, product though National Weather Service has begun issuing. We've seen snow, just not the alerts. Right, right, not not the snow squall warnings. It's right. a relatively new thing, so that's why the phone was kind of a new thing for folks. But snow squall is very dangerous. A lot of the major pileups are caused by those intense snow squalls. And I'll kind of explain what a snow squall is just for folks who may be wondering, well, Nathan, what is a snow squall? So if we could take a look at this, yeah, snow squalls are sudden onset of very heavy snow. And that's what makes them so dangerous is because they do indeed come out of nowhere. Really, you have fine weather conditions and when the snow squall approaches, it's a whole different story. So it's an intense burst of that snow and wind. I kind of compare it to a severe thunderstorm where it's just a very small area with intense precipitation. But in this case, it's wintry precipitation and not rain. But it does cause those whiteout conditions and it can basically go from unlimited visibility to zero visibility very quickly. And that makes those roads, those can go from fine to slippery very, very quickly. So again, these are very dangerous uh, things when they do come through and they're very short duration. Unlike a blizzard that lasts for hours and hours and hours, these usually last only about 15 to 30 minutes because they are moving pretty quickly, much like a severe thunderstorm warning. So that's what that is. You may see a few of them. They're not very common around here. And again, it's a relatively new product. That snow squall warning the National Weather Service has. So uh, that's why it's the first time we've seen them across the region, and that's why the first time the phones have buzzed with them as well. But because of that snow squall, of course, we do have no travel advised. Devil's Lake Basin down through the Jamestown area and down I-94 into Fargo Moore had been seeing some icy and snowy roadways across the rest of the area. So again, take it easy on those roads, but Stacy, Justin, I'll explain uh, what to expect with the rest of this system, which is surprise more wind and I'll have the details in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Nathan. And with the weather, it's a good idea to keep that VNL weather app handy for forecasts right at your fingertips. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL weather in the App Store today. A woman is recovering in the hospital tonight after jumping off the Fargo pedestrian bridge into oncoming traffic on I-94. Several witnesses called 911 this morning. Mental health experts say if you or someone you know ever sees something like this, it's important to talk through it. We're always thinking, I don't want to bother them with their, this question, or maybe they're not thinking about it. I don't want to bring the, be the one to bring this up. But I think anytime some, somebody experiences something on this level, that's all they're going to be thinking about. Two cars crashed to avoid hitting the woman. No one involved in that crash was hurt. New tonight, people are t taking to social media concerned about a text that people across the valley and in other states have been receiving. It's coming from various phone numbers with a picture of a girl. One person claims this is a form of sex trafficking. Valley News team's Alex Larson spoke to officials today to separate fact from fiction. Alex? Stacy, Justin, Fargo and West Fargo police say they started getting reports of this scam during the last couple of days. But the claim, the claim of it being a form of sex trafficking is not true. They say the scammer cannot see your location through a text exchange, but they could if you click on a suspicious link. Police tell us you will rarely see sex trafficking out in the open for everyone to see, and it certainly wouldn't be documented through text. However, West Fargo PD says people from our area are being targeted for a reason. They try to pull at our heartstrings or they try to you know, find other ways to try and get us to give us the, our information to them. This is just the, the next line of what they're doing, and it's, it's something to be very cautious of, but we see that tag word and, and we immediately you know, go to um, you know, either comfort or we try to go to someplace where we try to help people. That's why the Midwest gets hit pretty hard in this area for stuff like this, because that's just the mentality that we have around this, this area. Police say the biggest thing about these scams is that they're usually coming from overseas. Even if it looks like they're calling from a local number, it's a spoof they've taken from the Internet and are dialing with it. Police are taking these scams seriously, but there's not much they can do right now. They say in order to go catch some of these people, usually federal assistance is required. In studio, Alex Larson. Stacy, Justin. Hey, thanks, Alex. And for now, the best advice police have is to not respond, delete the text, and block the number.
An Earhart, Minnesota man has been arrested after police say he had admitted to stealing more than 150 catalytic converters. 34 year old Darren Dillon is charged with two counts, felony theft over $5,000. He faced up to 10 years in prison. Ottertail County deputies say they were contacted by a salvage yard on February 23rd who reported several catalytic converters stolen while the business was closed. Two other businesses also reported thefts to investigators. Documents say investigators found sale records showing Dylan sold 155 catalytic converters plus 69 car batteries, receiving more than $54,000 and say he later admitted to those thefts. It's day three of the Minneapolis teacher strike and today teachers marched downtown rallying at the Hennepin County Government Center. Picketers could be seen on overpasses and bridges around the city. Educators also gathered outside Minneapolis Public Schools offices. The Minneapolis Federation of Teachers said it has not received a counter proposal from the district since last week, saying teachers have been clear about what they want, higher wages, better mental health support and smaller class sizes. We need a living wage for ESP. We have to have competitive wages for our educators. We are hemorrhaging families. We are hemorrhaging educators. Our students deserve more, and we expect more from those at the table inside this building. What they are doing is reckless. Tomorrow, March 11th, will mark the two-year anniversary of the first recorded positive COVID-19 test in North Dakota. But right now, increasing vaccination rates and decreasing COVID cases and hospitalization numbers have led state officials to say we might be turning the corner from pandemic to endemic. Governor Burgum says the shift means the National Guard will be ending its longest mobilization effort in state history. It's included ministering almost half a million tests and more than 100,000 vaccines. Health officials say the availability of those vaccines and the new antiviral pills are factors in the decision to end the operations. The risk for COVID um, is still there. A COVID still can cause serious disease, but I think what is, has changed is that we have better tools now. Major General Al Dorman says he's proud of the Guard's response, saying their work with the Department of Emergency Services has been nothing less than remarkable. Inflation across the country has impacted many industries, and pet care is no exception. But if you're struggling to care for your pet, there are resources available. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling has the story. In times of severe inflation, some families are forced to take the heartbreaking step of surrendering their family pet. Since this time last year, inflation rates on pet care has seen a major increase, up 7.5% according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor. I would say if you're struggling, you can always just call us. We will talk you through things. In the FM area, Homeward Animal Shelter says they haven't had anyone surrendering their pet for financial reasons, but they realize money is tight. They say people need to keep in mind their budgets when deciding on adding a pet to the family. I would say the biggest thing is to look at kind of food costs. That's going to be your biggest monthly expense, but also veterinary care is big. Um, tr you know, factor in the training costs. So there's a lot of kind of costs that you're not necessarily going to think of right away, but it does add up over time. Be realistic is my biggest um, piece of advice. A puppy or kitten is going to be way more expensive than an adult animal. Both Smith and Clyde stress that for those that are struggling to take care of their pets, there are resources available from shelters to pet pantries, essentially a food pantry for pets. We do offer some pet food, um, but we can also give you, re you know, resources that can help you with anything else that you might need. In Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. For a list of pet pantries in the area, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. Still ahead on Valley News Live, the National Weather Service now forecasting the Red River may peak at unexpectedly high levels during the spring melt. We'll break down what that means for folks in the FM area. Good news is that snow squall has really fallen apart as it's entered into portions of lakes country, but now that northwest wind, and it is strong northwest wind, is taking hold again, blowing that snow around, causing some reduced visibilities. We, of course, expecting more travel trouble for us overnight and tomorrow. Forecast is next.